Cause they are jealous of the Balenciagas and the Margellas We used to sell drugs, now we're selling records so they can't tell us We ain't selling out, the show's selling out so they can't tell us What's good people, it's your boy Jay Fresh right here Now you already know when you talk about top entertainers, top selectors They all start with the letter J You already know Jay Spade's in the place. What's happening, brother? What's happening, brother, man? I'm here. Happy to be here, man. What's going on, Fresh? You Mate, good? I'm real good. I'm just looking at the footwear. I mean, oh, the man. levels are so... I don't know if we got that on camera, but we're the levels are so We're trying to be a little so bit subtle. Don't listen to him. Or we're just keeping it a bit subtle, but yeah, you know. You know. Man, it's got levels. It's got levels. Now, listen, right. we, talk about, we talk about records or mixtapes that are hot. Yeah. We talk about mixtapes that are hot like chicken soup. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about already. <laughs> I see you've been listening. I see you've been listening. That sounds like he's got the tapes, so... That's a good, that's a dope start to begin with anyway. But yeah, I'd like chicken soup. Go on, my brother. I'll, I'll pay attention. Triple MP3, yeah. running things. I'm not even gassing you. You already know how big it is. Yeah, well, we're just, we're just <laughs> grinding, man. Big up everyone that's appreciating the music. You get me? Mm, a lot of support out there now. Like a lot of artists at the moment, there was no big promo run. There was no big thing. You just went bang and it dropped. Bro, I, t- I let my fans know like the day before that. All right, cool. You know what? You don't want this tape? No more waiting, no promo, no nothing. Give me mm. a thousand, thousand likes for this and you can have it. And a thousand was just like, you know what I mean? It was mm. light work for them. Light so work. Basically, I just said to them, I'm ready to give you the mm. tape. But this is just to let you lot know mm. I'm coming. So, yeah, that was it. And then from there, it just kind of took off like wildfire. No the way there. There's DJs inside supporting it. All the, um, the fans foremost, they kind of put it in a place where everyone had to start paying attention, mm-hmm. you know, like that. And now we have it, man. GRT in progress. Exactly. Now, the momentum behind the mixtape is big. Mm. So one question I need to ask you is, when you drop a record out of nowhere, yeah. you, you need like a big record plugger. You need yeah. like a big a big person behind you. Yeah. So yeah, talk yeah. to me about the kind of skills that are required for a, for a talented record plugger to get your product where it needs Boy, to be at. My, my fans are the dopest pluggers I had. <laughs> And then I ran into somebody. Should I, should I, should I say her name? Am I allowed to? You're going to edit this out? Wait, wait, wait. Big up girl like Gabby, you get me? Helping us put the whole project together. Mm-hmm. Putting in a whole, helping us with that footwork, getting it to places that we kind of couldn't reach on our own thing. You know them way this. So I've got to give Gabby a big, loud shout. She's helping us with the PR right now, putting everything together. Because, you know, we're a little bit, we're from the streets, so we didn't really understand a lot of things about the game. Mm-hmm. And she kind of educated us on a lot and told us what routes to go on. Mm-hmm. I mean, just a little bit of navigation will help. Mm. So, big up Gabby for that. And like I said, big up my fans because they were like my dope first pluggers before we ran into Gabby. <laughs> and that just kind of made her job easier. Mm. Now, you mentioned there a little bit of education. I need a little bit of schooling from you now, fam. Yeah. Like, I'm down the South Coast. I'm doing my thing. We're doing everything. But people come up to me and go, fresh. What is the best way to deal with the pagans? And, <laughs> and I can come up with various answers. Boy, but I, I need to speak to the main man and get like some, you know, quotable lyrics. Listen, man, you just address them accordingly. You know, like that. So whoever can take take from that what they want. <laughs> but when it comes to dealing with pagans, you address them accordingly. So if there's pagans that you need to ignore because they're not really worth your time and day. They're not relevant. Yeah, then you just leave that to die. You know what I'm saying? And then if there's pagans that's really worth the time of day, then you address them accordingly. Dress Simple. them accordingly. That's the quote. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know you got what I meant from that, so... Hopefully everyone else did. <laughs> now, um, as, a, as a DJ and as a broadcaster, I'm excited that we're now in a place musically where I can play UK music, UK rap, UK hip hop regularly in the clubs alongside the US records. It's been a long time coming, man, but it's refreshing and it's wicked to have that now. Yeah, we work for that though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, an overnight thing. Yeah, we worked for that. It's been a long journey and all of that. Big up to everyone that was kind of doing it before me that kind of left it halfway for us to come and pick up and carry on to the next level. But um, like you just said, the fact that DJs are spinning US-based records and UK-based records back to back, that says a lot. Because at one point, it was never like that. Whether you couldn't could, could do it, you clear yeah, the floor. Yeah, 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 that was taboo, as some people say. So now, um, big up, man, big up. UK is breaking barriers. Like even in Canada right now, the UK hip hop scene is getting a lot of love yeah, and man. a lot of airplay in Canada. So even you get guys like Drake, OVO, Radio, you're getting UK music played on mm. them stations there. So it's not just, you know what I mean? Mm. So we're, we're it's spreading global. It's yeah, fully it's global growth, now. growth, growth, growth. Mm. Now, we look at the mixtape and there's a number of records on there. Mm. Nobody is the one at the moment. 
over yeah. 700,000 views. Again, light work for man like Jay Spades. Oh, Come on. We're just working, man. That's Ooh. all, man. Shout, you know what I mean? Shout out to the team. Shout out to us. Because you don't know we work hard. And shout out <laughs> to the team. Shout out to the fans. You get me? But for me, lad, like, there's a couple of joints on the I'm feeling, Mayweather in particular. But yeah. I realise it's, it's like asking a parent who is their favourite child when I'm going to yeah, ask you, what is your favourite record? You know I was going to say, well, yeah, go for Boxer then, your favourite record. Talk my favourite record, I want, um, off the, can, that's a, can you do it off your mixtape? Can you pick honestly, one? Your favourite one? Honestly, I don't know, man. It would, I think it boils down to how I'm feeling and what the use of the record may be. Because mm-hmm. if I'm in the gym, I might want to listen to Mayweather mm-hmm. or some, any gym music like Amazing or something like that. But if I'm, I don't know, man. If we cruise around town or we in a political spot, I might want to listen to what's going on. I might want to listen to like there's so much work, all them type of songs that it's just it all depends on what energy I need for what time of day. I, you know what I mean? So that's what it boils down to. But the num- the ones that I just listed, it would be between between them. Yeah. So that that's as close as we're gonna get it. Yeah. That's as much as we can and cut it can down. Just be in any mood and say nobody. <laughs> that's what they that's what they're rinsing right now. Like every street corner mm. I go. Like, that's the song that they're banging at. Nobody's, even before the radio took it. So it was like, okay, this is dope. You know what I mean? So I might say nobody's until further notice. Okay, until further notice. We got, we got an answer there. We got your favourite kid in the end. So thanks for that, man. I want to talk to you about ghostwriters. Now, is there room for them in rap, in hip-hop music? And if there is, would you ever consider using one? You know what? Hip-hop was always kind of like a, a little... Like it had criteria at one point where I think like R and B singers and all that on all that type of people, people from other genres was freely allowed to use like ghostwriters and all mm-hmm. that type of thing there. With hip hop it was more of a you was the master of your own craft. Mm-hmm. So it's like now I feel like the game's evolved where you are allowed to have ghostwriters for the simple fact that I think this conversation's even deriving from the fact that Drake's got a ghostwriter. That was a topic hot topic for Hot me topic, ago. man. But um as I said, Drake, you can't limit him down to just being a rapper. He's an artist in my eyes. You understand what I'm saying? So the rules that might go for him and that might go for another artist, they might differ for the fact that Drake's a man that will go in and sing a hook. He will go in. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. does. So he kind of blurs the lines a little a rapper's bit. job and more. So for certain people, yeah, I guess it works. But um, me personally mm-hmm. and people around me and the people in the genre. That's that, what I want to know. Nah, no? Nah, nah. Never had a ghost rapper. Never Most, would? I can't say I would never would because if we're in a studio and and as much as I'm be working hard and bring bringing out these hits, I feel like my consistency has been good enough to say yeah, I'm I've got a good like I'll be knocking them out of the park. I've got mm. a good, good catalog of music, but if I'm in that creative space with other people around me that and we're feeling on the same wavelength and they might come up with something a tad bit quicker than me and we work from there. If that's considered to be ghostwriting, then I might. But if someone's just gonna let, send me a whole reference track now, I'm a bit weird when it comes to all that. I love the authenticity, man. Yeah, you gotta yeah, keep it yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. You mentioned Drake, of course. Yes. So I wanna talk to you real quick about US artists. Mm-hmm. There used to be a time when US artists used to come to this country and they see it as the as the main point of call for Europe. And it was it was it was kind of difficult for UK artists to, to touch base with them, to connect, to get on get on the tour, get on the support slots. Now we're in a situation where the US artists touch down and they've already got the connections, they already know who they're feeling, they're already reaching out to people. People like Coke Boys are hollering at my man J Spades yeah, a, a while yeah, back and going Showtime. Apart from the music, we kind of came from a, a street background that was kind of our arm, rim, our arm reach was a little bit longer than a lot of rappers or mm-hmm. a lot of UK-based artists and that. So a lot of these guys, when they come in there, they were already familiar with us. Some of, these, some of them we even pick up from the airport. You know what I mean? Because not being funny, a lot of people, like England was kind of based as a place where a lot of people thought they could come in. Everyone was just drinking tea and coffee and talking posh right there <laughs> until early state. Like, I'm not going to say like recently, but before it got to a point where rappers started getting losing stuff somehow jewelry's going missing this that stuff's happening in london and then they started looking at london a little bit different you understand mm. so we kind of just formulated this whole situation where all right cool when you come in make sure you check in with us we can guarantee your stuff is good until that day you get back on a flight and mm. get back home so that's how our relationship kind of started with one guy to one guy and when that guy gets back to the states is he might know of a few artists that's flying to the UK. He might be like, yo, listen, take these man's number, mm-hmm. phone them, they're my peoples, they looked after me when I was out there, these are the dudes you need to link up with, you understand? So that's how we kind of just 
networked and intertwined everything together mm. the music the streets the just everything everything together and now we have it exactly and like with most things it it kind of comes quite or- organically as well when it comes natural the connections made and everything's nice it wasn't even for the fact that they were just running with us for the for the street team it was the fact that a lot of these guys was actually feeling the music because that's important man anything because my thing's a little bit different and it's a little bit more I don't even know how to say it to you. It's like certain man, because I, I never really grew up with Graham. Mm-hmm. When Graham was hitting and tearing stuff up, I spent a lot of time abroad. What were you I listening was, to was, as you were growing up? Yeah, I was listening to rap and like Bashman and dancehall music mm-hmm. and all that type of thing. You get me? So when I came, Graham was like brand new for me. So it took a little bit of a growth process and learning time to figure out, say, okay, cool. This is what's run in the UK. This is that. But if, as I said, if you listen to my music, it's evident that I didn't spend my whole life mm. um, like in the UK area. To take a UK, my Jamaican background, my Caribbean background in my music. So that kind of just leaks out and seeps mm. out. In certain <laughs> points. But yeah, so, and a lot of people, as I said, a lot of these artists and that, when they come over, it's like they kind of come from the same type of background, mm. like Caribbean background. So they kind of... There's a lot of similarities there. Yeah, they a lot touch of shit. They're like, yo, really, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, uh, yeah, man, big up. Wicked, man, wicked now. I know in the past you've said that, you know, you've been putting out those bangers, those big records, but you haven't quite been putting out the volume of music yeah. that you'd like to. So I want to talk to you now quickly once you once you get cool and take the jacket off. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you yeah. about... Yeah. Uh, big questions, you get me? Um, oh, shit, man's off the chair and everything. Yeah. Off, off camera, off everything. But I want to talk to you about how you, how you consume music as well, how you consume music, because um, SoundCloud is a massively powerful tool, but that's had so much heat on that oh, recently. So backwards. Accounts being closed, yeah. people losing bits and pieces. So for you, how do you listen to music? How do you consume it all? Um, I think, yeah, I think, I think that's what I've been doing. It's mostly YouTube or... Um, yeah, like iTunes, YouTube, all that type of stuff. And me, I'm really in touch with like the younger, my, like my young boys, they put me onto everything. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if, if there's a new 18 year old or whatever, 70 and he's killing it, I might get a plug way before even the radio hears about him. Because you've got you know the right saying? people around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. my young boys will be like, yo, take him in spades, he's hard, he's mm-hmm. very, and I'll be like, yeah, very, and I take it in and I, I see why they gravitate to it. So you know what I'm saying? So guys like Jay Huss, um, Grizzly One Fiddy, Mo Stacks, all these guys, I was aware of them long before even the corporate started mm. getting involved and knocking their doors. You understand? <laughs> so that's why you see them even on Nobody's and like the track's powerful mm. right now. It's mm. doing good things. Mm. I mean, viral content is really important now and one that you cannot get away from at the moment. Make sure I quote this right. Is, is the why you fuck you lying? So like, again, we go back to Pagans. If, you, if you're going to tell man that you weren't 10K this morning, yeah. but you're in the beat up Man United tracksuit and yeah. the beat up trainers, and I, and why the fuck are you lying? And, and your belt's falling apart. Ah, oh, this is nothing crazy. Yeah, I, can't no, believe, no, I can't believe, no. I can't believe it. I can't plug into that. Mm, oh my God, <laughs> why are they lying? I don't understand, <laughs> man. But that's how the game is now, isn't it? I guess like that's the whole basis behind a lot of things. Everyone's like, yeah, I made 10K this morning off of fraud and whatnot, right here. But the simple fact is, the whole word that used to describe the situation actually is what it is. Mm. So when a guy says I'm doing fraud, most times they are frauds. <laughs> so, you know. Away from music, quick question for you. Yeah. I just Elba. It just Elba. That's the white man pronunciation coming yeah, through right yeah, there. Yeah. James Bond, is he too street for it? No, he ain't. Come on, man. Like, it just is an actor. So when it comes to being an actor, you can't really differentiate and say, ah, right, this person's two street or this person, whatever role's given to them is that the, is the role that they're going to have to play. Personally, right? I think he'd smash it. That's what I'm saying to you. With English, if Idris wants to be a proper, well-spoken, polished, like, Englishman, <laughs> as we <you'd> say, <laughs> then he can do that because that's the role that's given to him. You understand what I'm saying? So you can't limit his career and say Idris can only play street guys or he can only play a villain in a mm. film or rare tete. I think that's really wrong and I think that's like kind of limiting his career and you don't believe in his capabilities. Mm. So, Give him the role and you see what happens. Mm. But even with that being said, I heard the writers, the actual writers of the whole story was like, mm, we, don't, we don't really know about all that. So we'll, we'll see how that pans Exactly. Out. I mean, this might just be another internet rumour, but people are saying potentially David Beckham. And I'm like, this is a joke. This is a waste of my time you know to what? read this tweet. I'm not being a weirdo. I'm proper Come not on, being man. a weirdo. Go on. I'm not being a weirdo. But, but Beckham might be the man for the job. I'm not being funny at all. Has, like, he, got, has he got that... 
Okay, he's got the look. Has he got the kind of calm, um, composed? He might be, but does he give that impression off? Can he act? Boy, with seven months, seven, eight months of intensive acting courses, he might be. You give him mm. the best acting coaches in the game, put him in front of the camera, he might just might deliver. You know what I mean? He's already got the look in a suit and whatnot. Like, mm. he can pull off the polished look yeah, and everyone. Fully. Yeah, so, yeah, I think so. All right, we'll wait and see, man. We'll so big up Beckham, even though I'm an Arsenal fan, but you know. Got someone wants to write f- someone wants to write a theme tune for that clearly <laughs> come on we know their connections um last question because it's been great to link up with you man i know you're a busy guy uh, i want to talk to you about merchandise every, yeah. every everyone who's big in the game has has the a grade merchandise yeah. so for you i mean we're talking t-shirts we're talking jackets that keep you hotter than hot when you're getting Bro. interviewed i mean how many items are out there on road at the moment that people we're get changing hold of? the game like right now I'm, I'm waiting for some lighters to arrive that we're going to be throwing out of the shows Cause you mm. know when we go to the show, people want to throw out their lighters, put your lighters in it. Health and, and safety. Stuff. Yeah, so <laughs> like we're just doing everything you name, and as I said to you, everything we do, everyone else seems to copy. Like a couple mm. minutes behind us, so we started out with like the cups, which I still ain't even seen in the UK. Yet. The only thing I've seen, only place I saw those is in America. Like mm-hmm. those white um, Palestinian cups. I can't remember what they're called. They're mm-hmm. white cups with like the branding on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also the UK styrofoam. styrofoam. Yeah, no, I didn't see no one with them. We got jackets. Um, we're possibly going to do a collaboration with Alpha Industries right now for a new line of GRT jackets. So we'll see how that pans out. There's t-shirts, there's hoodies, like you name it. Like we're not even trying to ease up. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the takeover. Like Gap. Like my first stop, the stuff I had before, More Money, More Pagans. Like that was everywhere from school kids, mm. working guys, like you name it. You and how, how many t-shirts do you reckon you sold? Give me a ballpark figure. The smile on your face says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We done we done good numbers, bro. We done a couple mm. thousands. Mm. I went hand in hand with my partner back then, which was um, StashMoney.co.uk, and we done units. As I said, we sold clothes like Gap. You mm. understand? Because that was off the basis that I was getting out the music for free. You see me? So I'm like, all right, cool. We can't really be issuing out the Freedom Pass for everything. So of course not. You know, have the music for free off the back of the music. They came and bought the merchandise. Mm. You know, like that. And that's how we kind of structured and worked it from there. But now this was my first project on iTunes, um, GRT done a couple fires in the first week that told me what i needed to know mm. without too much promo or being everywhere rare to so it was like all right cool that's a fair exchange for me you know mm. the way there so clothing branding all of that stuff look out for it it's there well i just want to say man that like selling a few thousand t-shirts <laughs> a few thousand t-shirts at 50 quid a pop i mean man's making money man's fully getting rich together <laughs> <laughs> don't tell no one don't tell no one <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say don't tell <laughs> Listen, bruv, it's been wicked to link you. Thank you for your time. Jay, Jay Fresh, big up. You know that Jay is a powerful, powerful, powerful syllable in all the names. It's a co sign in the industry yeah, now. Don't say a word, man. Big up.